Uh, my name is Stipe Grgas. I'm the chair of the American Studies program in uh, Zagreb. Before that, I worked in Zadar for 25 years on the English department. Um, I teach courses in uh, the theory of American studies, the contemporary novel. My interests are in uh, human spatiality, uh, 20th century culture and literature. I have a couple of publications, uh, uh, three books on, uh, uh, two on Irish culture and literature and one on American culture and literature. And I'm here to participate uh, at this uh, remarkable uh, symposium, Rethinking uh, Humanities and the Question of the Other in the Discussions of Postmodernity. Uh, you presented a lecture today uh, entitled, entitled uh, Postmodernity and the Revenge of the Real. What would you say were some of the key points uh, of your lecture? Uh, I think the, uh, I realized that the key points in my lecture actually came out in the discussion where I know that the pretentiousness of the title uh, should perhaps have been more focused upon. Perhaps the biggest problem is actually the definition of the real which was brought out in the discussion. Uh, the real, uh, the way I conceive it, has to do with um, the irreducible materiality of life and particularly uh, as this has to do with uh, the sphere of the economic. Uh, what I try to do in rethinking, um, uh, in, uh, in this agenda of rethinking uh, the humanities is to show how um, it is necessary to incorporate uh, economic knowledge in interdisciplinary uh, research if we try to um, understand or explain uh, the state in which we are in. I intentionally use that word, the state we are in, because I believe that we live in a contemporary situation which is demarcated, and here I'm particularly speaking of the American uh, situation, which is demarca demarcated by two events, one being uh, the event of 9-11 and the other one the subsequent uh, financial uh, crisis. Uh, what I try to do in the paper is to show how these two events reveal things which uh, within the former constellation, which is almost synonymous with postmodernity, uh, how it reveals things which were previously hidden. And I try to explore in the paper the strategies by which this hiddenness came into being. I try to explore in the realm of the economic uh, tactics used by capital to hide the material conditions of our lives. Uh, there was an, uh, an interesting point you mentioned during your lecture regarding uh, the, the fantastic nature of this financial, financial world being more, even more fantastic than actually uh, literature itself, fiction itself. Could you elaborate a little bit on it? I think all of us could elaborate if we sort of take stock of the world in which we live. Uh, if we follow uh, reports or the way that the uh, world of finance has been presented in journals, in uh, newspapers, in the, in the mainstream TV accounts. Um, I, of course, am not the only one who speaks about the phantasmal uh, uh, nature of uh, the financial scene. As a matter of fact, in the paper, I don't use the word phantasmal, but it was afterwards, uh, it popped up in the discussion afterwards. I use words like dematerialization, uh, fantasy, uh, etc. Uh, by saying that it's more uh, phantasmal than fiction, I sort of uh, draw upon experiences of people that have tried to cope from different perspectives uh, with the problem of this financial uh, uh, leviathan. Um, for instance, uh, uh, an English uh, novelist who was supposed to give an objective account of the banking industry, uh, explicitly in one of his forewords, says that when he started, uh, uh, started analyzing bank transactions and what they were doing, it seemed much more irreal and much more fictional than actual fiction. Um, I think the very intri intricacy, the very uh, abstruseness, uh, the sort of um, uh, irreality of all the 
uh, things that have been going on in the financial sphere and that are still taking place, all of this lend a sense to the uh, lend a sense of complexity to that to that sphere, and uh, perhaps one uh, way of structurally uh, understanding that uh, uh, complexity is to use things which people in literary studies have sort of isolated as the very basis or the merits or the characteristics, for instance, of the postmodern novel. Mm -hmm. So what would you say uh, is the position of literature today as opposed to this uh, financial sphere? Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the discussion, uh, there was a point to ask within the context of rethinking the humanities, what is the position, for instance, of literature or any other uh, humanistic endeavor. And it's not only, of course, uh, the humanistic disciplines, but I will also uh, uh, draw attention to the relevance, for instance, of sociological knowledge, anthropological knowledge, psychology, etc., etc. I think the uh, role, or if there is any purpose of literature in today's world, is that it gives a synthetic view of what is taking place. Uh, to deal with finances by purely mathematical formulas, or to re, uh, leave the financial sphere exclusively to uh, the financiers or uh, analysts of literature, is to simply ignore the complexity of the issue. Uh, as always, I think literature, uh, and here I would particularly in the American context, uh, isolate the so-called postmodernist writers, and I have to uh, propagate these writers, writers like Pynchon, Delilo, Gaddis, and all the rest of them, uh, give a much more um, uh, convincing account of uh, American reality than any other particularist knowledge. If there is a purpose to literature, I think he has to confront that reality or that totality. And uh, if we want to at least explore the consequences of the financial sphere, how it impacts on human lives, on human subjectivities, then I think uh, literature provides a venue of exploring the edition. Mm -hmm. uh, I have one more question. Uh, I know you did a lot of work uh, dealing with uh, space, speciality, uh, theory of space, uh, human geography. Uh, what made you uh, switch to this more practical or pr pragmatic field of research? I think from the point of the paper, uh, people might be mistaken that I have made a switch. But in my presentation, I've uh, based many of my readings on David Harvey, the American geographer. And uh, uh, I think that uh, when doing economics, when speaking about processes of which I spoke in the presentation, that in the background, all of these pra practices are social, spatial practices. Uh, in this kind of a paper, it's impossible to open up a different sphere, because I, uh, I think uh, the project I am engaged upon, of which this is only a small part, would definitely explore how these economic issues are reflected in the uh, sphere of space, in the sphere of how uh, uh, capital creates space, how it is based on space, and what kind of spatial configurations it, have, it has left in its wake. To put it differently, I think uh, my move to economics uh, was motivated both by existential uh, uh, reasons, because we live in a particular situation. But as I said, uh, uh, working within human geography, which at one time I felt was uh, uh, very much interested uh, or, or very relevant to understanding our attachment to place or how space and place constitute identity. If this was my previous work. I think uh, that uh, geographers like David Harvey actually reveal how space functions within an economic formation. Well, to sort of return to the very beginning of the discussion, when we spoke about the real, the problem of the real, that real is embodied and manifested particularly as a spatial uh, practice. So if I was to 
uh, give another presentation or to sort of, when I uh, uh, write out this presentation, then definitely geography and space will help me to further expound and explain what I mean by, by the concept of the real. Thank you very much.